Number 28. What is the temperature of a 11.2 liter sample of carbon monoxide at 744 torr? If it, if it occupies 13.3 liters at 55 degrees Celsius and 744 torr. Okay, okay. So we're talking about gases. We have pressures. We got a, a volume going on here. They're asking for temperature. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to list out all my variables. There are going to be a lot of different gas formulas that you have to memorize for this chapter. So it's really important for you to understand which formula to pick. And the best part or the, the best way to picking out the correct equation is to write down all of your gibbons. So in this case, it seems like I have some things that go together. They're asking for a temperature and that's with 11.2 liters at a pressure value, right? At 744 torr. So in this case, I'm just going to, you know, list them out. So I got a pressure. They told me that it was 744 torr. And I had a volume that goes with this pressure, 11.2 liters. And they're saying, what is the temperature? So... I have a temperature value that I'm not too sure of. That's what I need to solve for. So now there's a, there's a new set of variables, right? It says if it occupies right now 13.3 liters, that's another volume, at a different temperature, 55 degrees Celsius and 744 torr. So I have, I have a new set of variables. So the pressure looks like it's still the same, 744. They stated it again, though, so I'm just going to write it down. The new volume is 13.3 liters, and the temperature is 55 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, now we have to figure out which formula are we going to use. If you see sets of variables, meaning you have two pressure values, you have two volumes, you're, you know, you have set up for two temperatures, you are using the combined gas law, which is this one right here. So anytime that you start to see sets of variables, go with your combined gas law formula. Now, the beauty of the, the combined gas law formula is that you can manipulate this formula on the conditions that you need. Now, for example, the combined gas formula, the whole shebang, has pressure, volume, temp, and N, which is the number of moles. Get rid of any unit that you don't see here. So for example, I only have P, V, and T. They didn't state anything about N, so get rid of it. Goodbye. Makes it easier on ourselves. So now it's just going to be something divided by T. Now here's another thing. Do you notice that the pressure in the beginning is equal to the pressure at the other time? In this case, the pressure is constant. It did not change. If you have a variable that is constant and it does not change, you could also get rid of it. Because basically what you're going to do is you need to, you know, get a P value on the other side. And if you divide 744 by 744, it cancels out. So that's why it's just easier for us to say, bye-bye. Get rid of the P's as well. They're constant. Who cares? And now we have a beautiful formula of just volume divided by temperature. So I'm just going to focus on these two. But here's the thing, guys. With your combined gas law, there's only one rule. You always got to play by the rules. If you're using the combined gas law, the temperature has to be in Kelvin. Can't be in Celsius. Reason being is that Celsius values have negatives in them, which is going to mess up the signs of the, you know, combined gas law. So Kelvin has no negatives, and that's why we use the Kelvin value. So they gave us a Celsius temperature. I need to convert this into Kelvin. Now, there's two conversions, right? One usually is you could just plus 273. And the other one, if you want to be more specific, you would plus it by 273.15. I'm just going to plus it by 273. It will be a general uh, number. 
I don't think it's really going to make that much of a difference. So 55 plus 273. This temperature now is at 328 Kelvin. And this value will now go into the temperature. Okay, so let's plug in our values. Now it doesn't matter which side is one or two comparatively to this, right? I don't care if I label these as my ones or twos, it doesn't matter. But I guess since this is on the left side, I'll say these are my one values and these are my twos. Maybe I'll put that in blue. Okay, so V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So let's see, I got 11.2. And when I start plugging in units, I don't I don't plug in the, the units at the end, right? I'm not going to say liters. It just gets a little hairy. I like to just work with my numbers. So this divided by X, I like to call it X. I'm solving for the temperature. Equals, on this side, I got a volume, 13.3 divided by the temperature in Kelvin, which is 328. Now, just make sure the liters, they have the same unit. That's why I was able to plug them in. Okay, but if one was like mills and the other one was liters, you have to first convert and then you plug it in. But now we're ready to go. Looks like we could just cross multiply here, right? And then we're just going to solve for X. So I get 13.3X equals 11.2 times 328. I'm not going to round because that's not my final answer. And I'm going to divide by the 13.3. That gets rid of that. And now I have X equals this divided by 13.3. I get roughly 276. And now you just have to write the unit. Well, it was a temperature. And since temperature is only allowed in Kelvin, and it came right out of the formula, this has to be Kelvin. And that's it. So what was the temperature? 276 Kelvin. If you needed to find this out back in Celsius, you would subtract 273. And that would tell you the uh, degree in Celsius. So 276 mi minus 273 is 3 degrees Celsius. They didn't say specifically which unit they wanted the answer, and they just said temperature, so I would always leave it in Kelvin, okay? So 276 Kelvin, or 3 degrees Celsius, whichever one. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 15,000 subs. That's crazy, and it's all because of you guys. My brother and I, we really do appreciate you all, and I hope you guys are having a great day, okay? Keep studying hard. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.